Welcome to UFO No, the show where we separate science fact from science fiction the best that we can. We speculate, we accommodate all kinds of theories. Very open minded over here at UFO No Show. Yeah. We make no promises. That's right. And that's uh, Blind Mike over there. You're familiar. We're, we're acquainted. <laughs> we're acquainted. Welcome back, Mike. We missed you. We oh, missed that's you. right. I, I did miss the one. Yeah, you were gone. Mr. C was here. We had a phenomenal oh. talk. and uh, But, yeah, we missed you, man. So I'm glad you're back, buddy. I'm back. He's back. Oh, well, that's right. What was it that? Uh, it was a cosmic headache. A cosmic headache. Uh, that's what I thought was going on. I, I, I was, like we do with UFOs, yeah. I was speculating. Yeah, I stayed up too late and then slept. Yeah, well, there you go. That's what happened. There you go. There you go. Uh, so, once again, Blind Mike is with us. I Thank know. you for joining another show, another beautiful, wonderful episode of UFO No. If you've been following us along for, since the beginning. Thank you, and a few people out there, Bob, Damon, Leonard, of course, for always giving me a little texty text. I want to believe what you all can do as well, 208-790-8226. Give me a little text. Give me a little alien emoji. Give me a little, little whatever, but uh, I want to connect with you guys, and uh, you can follow us on Facebook, UFO No Podcast Facebook page, and uh, we're going to try and implement a few new things here and there when we can. But for now, we're just putting out new episodes on the reg. On the reg. You know, like regular? Yeah. I did I, like the cool kids, Mike. I see. We're too old to be millennials. Damn it. Too old. Anyways, but. I don't even know what constitutes a millennial anymore. You know, you can find wherever you're listening to this podcast, you can find the rest of our episodes, probably where we found this one. But. Oh, well, guess what? In case somebody sent you one episode and was like, dude, check this out, and this happened to be it, you can go find the rest wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Everywhere. Wherever. Wherever. Everywhere. Yep, we are. Um, so I want to, you know, our shows, I got a couple of, we got a couple of sponsors now. Mike, we're in Do the big we? leagues. We're in the big leagues. Oh, um, snap. Little place I help manage. Clarkston CBD Co. is a wonderful little sponsor. We kick anxiety and inflammation's ass on the regular. Gummies, capsules, rubs, smokables. We got it over there. ClarkstonCBDCo.com. You can shop online. Um, all that great jazz. Thank you, Clarkston CBD Co. for being a sponsor. And then a new one, new place, new thing. Those of you who don't know, I'm kind of a cannabis enthusiast. And so uh, I got in line with a great company I love called Hell's Canyon Cannabis Company. And they grow all organic craft cannabis, um, and it's fantastic. So if you live um, in Washington State and you like craft cannabis, go and find them at your local cannabis retailer. But if they're not there, if they aren't there in that shop, you give me a little jingle, 208-790-8226, and I'll make sure to get a hold of them and say, hey, hey, hey. Y'all need craft cannabis up in this piece. I know you've been hearing about it. I know who they've asked. Oh, yeah. You're going to hear it. Hell's Canyon Cannabis Company. Craft, small batch cannabis, beautiful, organically grown, true, live organics, soil style. It's beautiful. Anyways, give me a call. I'll set your retailer up with them. Uh, but anyways, on with the show. Make sure, go find us on Facebook. Give us a subscribe or something wherever you're listening. Uh, it really helps grow the show. And, hey, if you know anybody that wants to share their UFO experiences with us, please reach out. Facebook, the number I gave dropped earlier, that too. Any way you can. Well, Re if you didn't listen, you have to rewind to go and find it. God uh -huh. damn. So much work. 
You can also get a hold of Blind Mike at the UFO No Podcast Facebook page or also on his own Facebook page, which is uh, Mike Robbins. Let's be honest. I don't respond real quickly. Well, yeah, they haven't. You'll know. They really haven't made a whole lot of advancements for the blind on smartphones. Uh, no, have they? I don't. Well, I also don't have an interest in most of this thing. <laughs> Facebook. Well, I'm like, yeah. oh hey, what is my friend doing? Oh nope, they're not on. All right, bye. <laughs> That's, Facebook is That's like it. three minutes a day and loaded up. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Yeah. Nope, nothing I can read today. See ya. Well, make sure and drop us on whatever social media page you feel uh, that we are worthy to be splashed upon. Splashed. But we will, we appreciate that very much, being on whatever social media platform. Since we're, we're shortening words, uh, I'm pretty sure that's Sochmead. Sochmead! <laughs> Sochmead was also Sochmead, back bro. in... Uh, Back in ancient times, it was the type was of mead that? that was so. oh <laughs> that was made that was made by the local guy. It was kind of like uh, toilet wine in jail, except it was uh, oh jolly oh don't drink that sosh mead, <laughs> don't do it. Tell you, it's bad shit. It's real bad. I'll tell you, we here's what you'll be weeping out your penis by lunchtime. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even know. <laughs> I have never weeped out of my penis. <laughs> like that is thoroughly scared off. Not well, trying. That. No social meat for this guy. That's I will a- hard pass. <laughs> And this <laughs> moment is brought to you by the hard left turn that we make <laughs> That's on every right. episode. Oh no shit. That's hard left. Oh, Get back, man. make two rights, and then loop back around. Hey, I'll tell you what, this is about as serious as we get on this show. You know, pretty fucking serious is what I'm trying to say. Just from super laughter to <sighs> game I face. I suppose we get That's pretty right uh, here. complete get... game face, Ben. Absolute seriousness. We get pretty serious when we start talking Very about serious. Nazis. Right here, just like that. That's right. That's right. Stone face. Stone face. <laughs> just. <laughs> I want to be. I oh, have shit. That. I want that skill set. Eyebrows furled. I want that skill set. I want to be able to go from full, genuine laughter to That's just. Right. <laughs> That's right. Well, I've got some wonderful peace. Of UFO lore for us to sink our teeth into today, Mike. And that is... Oh, by the way, I want to make sure... Go and listen to our other episodes. We had uh, Mr. C on where we talked about secret space programs. We talked about Nazis in uh, Antarctica. Um, We uh, Go listen to our interview with Mark Bennett, who was on the show, which was fantastic, talking about the Ethereum Society. And then, of course, Wajid. Wajid. And we're going to have him on. Uh, or wait, no. By the time you've listened to this, we've had him on. Whoa, we're time traveling, Mike. We fucked some shit up. I know it. We're yeah, not it's okay. We're, we're in a careful. whirlwind of, of shite. See, what we do is we put a bunch of these together, and then we release them. And so occasionally we'll do one back-to-back or some shit like that. But when you guys hear it, it's weekly. That's all right, guys. I the forget magic about of when production. I hear the ones that we've recorded in the past. I argue with myself. Yeah, I feel like that. Cause Isn't that the, always fun? That's that's bonus content. That's right. Watch Mike listen to himself and yell at his own opinions. Yeah, I would do that. Hey, that's kind of why I got Anchor as a as a sponsor as well because you can start your own Anchor podcast and yell at yourself. It's beautiful. Oh, I wasn't going to start a podcast. I just figured if we played and we're like, oh, you how'd were, that episode You were go? plugging your own soon-to-be deep, dark, asshole secrets of Blind Mike. Yeah? Uh, Is that going to be the name of your show? What am I? Blind or Mike's Hello being. Darkness, My Old Friend. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to be the name of it? Let's take a BM with Blind Mike. <laughs> oh, my God, man. You could call it Toilet Talk with Toilet. Blind Mike. <laughs> I feel very upset now that I think about it. Your initials, 
BA. Yep. Pretty, pretty BA, bro. Badass. Pretty badass. Yep, yep. Yours are bowel uh, movement. Yeah. Yep. BM. Yep. Big old poopy. Yep. Oh, but <sighs> if you use my whole initials, which are BMA, then it's uh, bowel movement abnormal. So it's it's not, uh, or uh, achieved. <laughs> Bowel movement achieved. Bowel movement appreciated. Bowel movement approved. <laughs> Any A word, really. Any, <laughs> any word. Anyone. <laughs> just, just pick one. Aardvark. Aardvark. <laughs> Bowel Bad movement aardvark. aardvark. Oh, my God. Oh, that would be B-A-A, though. Badass. Big aardvark. mama's ass. There you go. Oh, my God. Boy, we really. Ben. Yes. Would you be my associate? <laughs> <laughs> Bring me a <laughs> tissue, perhaps. <laughs> oh shit! Anyways, go find us. Go like us. Listen to the show. You're already doing it. Just keep following us. It gets better. I promise. Here we go. Well, I shouldn't make promises. Yeah, we we've can't said keep. that like four times. <laughs> Hi, ho, silver, and away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we Get go. Around. The La Carta Reptilian Interview. Oh, shit. Just right into this. this right thing. into All it. Right. All right. If you can call this that. What? Right into it? Yeah. Yeah. This is the longest roundabout. We got stuck in it. This is how I navigate through life. That's right. All it's right. It's like point A to point B. Mine looks like a fucking crazy straw, dude. <laughs> Just like, over oh, where? What? Where is it? Or, no. Oh, I, so I there know. was an interview with a supposed reptilian alien. That uh, was put online back in the early 2000s. So we got, do we have a video? Is this just... Well, you can go find the video. We're not going to... It's long as fuck. But there so, is a video. There is a video so, called the La Carta Files. Are the La Carta be- Reptilian is, is this Interview. Is reptile behind a screen <laughs> like using... Well, One of those voice changers? It's actually, it's, from what I understand, it's, it's audio that was put into mm-hmm. like a video... So it could be put on YouTube, but it's I I from what all I've heard okay, is so the it's audio. Just the back, okay, because yeah, only heard if the there's audio. a video, I really as if it's not yeah. real. And there's several the like they could videos that you can go find where they're supposedly interviewing an alien. You know, there's like one with, you know, it's bug eyed. There's one with the which you know we should talk about that sometime. It's uh, like these what? alien autopsy videos. Oh yeah. You know, like some of them are fairly legit looking, but here's the problem. When you have something on a table that never moves, you just manipulate it. You can make things look so real, but it's the movement. It's the organic movement of the creature that give it away, whether it's fake or not. So you just sitting there playing with it yeah, we've while it's on a table claiming effects. that it's dead. I, to me, that's an easy cop out. You could well, easily they're like, do look, that. it looks like real skin. Okay, so we use pig carcasses all the time for a real skin simulation. Exactly. So, and I've seen some of the makeup artists and special effects. Shit yeah, that man, goes down. it's crazy. You can't tell me that on I don't know makeup wars or some shit that you couldn't turn a pig into an alien. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, if I can watch that shit in an hour. With that being said, this particular interview is audio only, but here we're going to get into it. So. It Just was released. For my own benefit. I'm going to picture a scene from. Uh, I don't even remember. My God! Jurassic All right, here's Park. Here's what I want you That's to. You remember the movie uh, Little Foot? Or wait, no, A Land Before Time. I want you First to envision off, cartoon show. Uh, yes, I want yeah. you to envision Little Foot being interviewed by. Why? Goofy. He's not a reptile. Who's not? I mean, Little Foot. He, he was yeah. a bronchiosaurus baby. Yeah. They're well, reptilians, brah. Well, as of maybe before 2000, but we have totally reevaluated what we think dinosaurs are since then. As in? As in we believe they're more related to birds than than lizards. Dr. Grant was right from Jurassic Park? I guess so, yeah. Damn. All right, we got way off. Yeah, I don't think we've been on yet. <laughs> I don't think we've gotten there. You can't be off if we just, this is a no call, no show, bro. Sure. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So audio only go, go watch it. Watch, listen yeah, go watch to the it. Audio. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go watch, do it. Go watch the audio. 
All right, so it was, it was released along with uh, uh, several mysterious documents named the Lakarta Files by a Swedish researcher by the name of Ali K., as well as several pieces of information, was a transcript of an apparent interview with a reptilian entity named, as the files suggest, La Carta. The transcript, as much as we must take it with a considerable pinch of salt, remains an intriguing read, not least due to the wealth of information from prehistory and the First War, quote-unquote, a time that remains, at least for some, a period deep, from antiquity that is far from settled. Indeed, much of what comes from this alleged interview, as bizarre as it sounds, fits in rather nicely with many of the independent theories of what took place deep in antiquity and whether advanced known to us civilizations might have existed. That was a very confusing statement that that made right off the bat. Antiquities. Yeah, so basically that means old stories, the histories of ufology. Yeah? Yeah. It's just, that's yeah. was they threw that in there. Recently, few, though, the account has been documented extensively by paranormal researcher Lon Strickler, uh, certainly one of the most intriguing accounts on record. So we're going to get right into it. Somewhere in South Sweden, December 1999. Mm-hmm. Um, pinpoint accurate, too. What? It said super pinpoint accurate. Yeah. Somewhere so in Sweden. Ollie, Cl- Ollie K., claims that Lakarta was introduced to him through another researcher who's named as EF. The interview in question took place in December 99, beginning on the 16th of the month. The researcher also stressed that they went into the interview as a complete skeptic, which would take place in a small house in southern Sweden, somewhere in a remote location. Now, as soon as he saw the alien being with his own eyes, however, he realized that he was about to embark on a unique and mysterious journey. The interview itself would take place over three hours and was extensive in detail, so much so that the transcript released in the La Carta files is an edited, imagine that, shortened version. This, according to Ollie, was due to a request following the interview that certain details and revelations not be made public at this time. He did also state, though, that the full 49-page transcript and the recordings of the interview remain in his possession. Only upon receiving permission, though, will he release them. From, I assume, this. The lady. Uh, see, here's what he, here's what you got to do as a good journalist you have to get like you have to why would you do an interview without permission first well i'm just i yeah it's supposed to be like oh the first actual live interview yeah. with an alien yeah and, and you don't make sure that you have complete ability to use everything that they say right. this person going in is like, and you're just gonna the let for them? not telling us stuff and then oh well i'm just gonna not tell mm-hmm. some stuff Motherfucker. So, oh my God, <laughs> I that's what I'm going to say to that. <laughs> All right, so, so off guard. <laughs> so, upon receiving permission, though, Bullshit, motherfucker. <laughs> will he release them? So, as we might imagine, many researchers and enthusiasts in the fields of UFOs, aliens, and the paranormal conspiracy struggle to accept the authenticity of such claims. So, what are we to make of them? Are they nonsensical fantasy? Outlandish revelations? Hmm? I don't know. They haven't released them. The interview then by Ollie's admission is a still incoherent in places where the parts... Oh, hold on a second. It is still a little incoherent in places where the parts to remain private have been edited out. However, we have to treat these accounts, like we said, with a pinch of salt, but it's still interesting. No, so if you send me incomplete work, then it's incomplete. You didn't I complete mean, the interview, therefore it's not done. It's very interesting, but all right. So there was a um, just saying. If I ask you how your breakfast was, and only so put this in two parts was of it, we're there was an article made happened. by a guy named Doctor Doctor Joe Lewis in Fate Magazine in '96. In the article titled "The Reptilians, Humanity's Historical Link to the Serpent Race." Lewis stated, 
Did humans evolve from reptiles? As long as humanity has kept records of its existence, Leonard's legends of a serpent race have persisted. These myths tell of a mysterious race of superhuman reptilian beings who descended from the heavens to participate in creating humankind and to teach the sciences, impart forbidden knowledge, impose social order, breed with us, and watch over our development. While many will dismiss the statement above as absolute nonsense, the fact is this idea does indeed resonate through our collective history, in our legends, myths, and folklore. The snake in the Garden of Eden stories, for example, or the tales of the watchers who came from above and taught how to make medicine, tend to the land and use metals to make weaponry. Many of these legends are popular in the ancient astronaut community, although the general rule of thumb is that these gods were extraterrestrials, possibly by the name of the Anunnaki. Might the Anunnaki and the reptilians be one and the same? And if so, did they come from outer space, another realm of existence or dimension, or perhaps they are, much like ourselves, indigenous to Earth, an invisible race ruling from the shadows? As the interview between Ollie and this apparent reptilian being began, the quite obvious opening question was, who the fuck are you and what are you? The response was fascinating in the extreme. According to the mysterious entity, she was a, quote, female reptilian being who was not human and no real mammal despite mammal-like body features due to evolution and who was part of a very old reptilian race. Then, and very much in line with the basic premise of the ancient astronaut theory, Lacerta, Lacerta, whatever the fuck, would state that they had called Earth their home for millions of years, and furthermore, many of the ancient human tribes would worship them as gods. In fact, they would even state that such grand civilizations as the ancient Egyptians and the Incas were aware and of and speak of their presence. Perhaps equally as interesting is the claim that Christianity has misunderstood the reptilians' part in human history, hence such descriptions of the evil serpent in the Adam and Eve stories. What's perhaps interesting here is the claims by some researchers, albeit from the edge of the fringes, that such misunderstandings are in fact purposeful twisting of the truth of prehistory events. So we they're saying that the serpents aren't bad, so that the whole Garden of Eden thing was what? Eve was starving and borderline retarded? didn't know to eat, and the snake slithered up and was just like, eat the apple. Look, man, low blood sugars can do all kinds of things. Yeah, like make serpents talk to you. Yeah. Probably a a thing. Well. Before you've had clothes figured out. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Let's see. I lost my place. Here we go. Lacerta would then claim that human beings are the result of extraterrestrial genetic engineering. However, this was carried out by a race of aliens who rapidly sped up the evolutionary process of humans. Interesting to note that for all the answers mainstream science has, it is still unexplained how human beings did evolve as relatively rapidly as they did. For example... What is the most often referred to as the missing link still baffles scientists in the mainstream, except that is for those who have at least started to consider the possibility that some form of genetic manipulation occurred at some point in the evolutionary timeline. Now that goes back to my, where I think that ties in Jack Parsons back in the early, early days of uh, NASA, the supposed father of science or uh, rocket science, who basically invented JPL, the company, mm. uh, Jet Propulsion Labs, and then also was had a hand in inventing rocket fuel, who was a huge fan of Albert, or wait, no, what was his name? Um, yeah, Albert uh, Crowley. Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley. Um, and followed his and supposedly opened a portal 
and then died, blew himself up. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, that's a potential a potentiality of where these paranormal entities could come from in a multi-dimension, trans-dimensional type way. Mm -hmm. But... That's only one theory, but I think if they're throwing out the whole they've been here for billions of years, yeah, you also have to throw out the theory, the other theory, that is they showed up in the 1930s when the Nazis were playing around with the occult and Jack Parsons was playing around with the occult. And, you know, he claims to have been able to finish Aleister Crowley's work because he, he combined science with religion and magic, mm. dark magic, to create this thing that he claims Albert, uh, Alistair Crowley was unable to because he didn't have the scientific knowledge to back it up. Mm. He was only able to to uh, fulfill part of it. So anyways, uh, but although many believe reptilians to be extraterrestrial to the Earth, Lacerta would claim that they were native Terrans who, while having, quote, some colonies in the solar system, they did indeed originate on Earth. Perhaps slightly ominously, the reptilian being would then state that the earth was not yours, quote, humans. It was never yours. So quick question for mm -hmm. this uh, reptilian lady that's been here forever. Yeah. Uh, that is bringing up the question of how humans evolved so quickly. Why are we still seeing little snakes and shit floating around and other reptiles that aren't up and around talking and being advanced? Does that mean that you also made a large jump evolutionary like you you would have had to have had it sped up for there to be some reptiles that are up and so maybe like, like humans and then there's still retarded snakes that are just biting people's ankles so maybe the gardener snake is the spider monkey of humans maybe it's the retarded little cousin <laughs> of of their company yeah. is what i'm gonna think because i feel like we're going right into the whole mickey mouse shit like why do they have pluto the, and then they started saying goofy was a dog or a cow yeah oh yeah Isn't he's a weird? fucking dog yeah he's a dog he's a dog and then someone a pointed cow. out he has a retarded pet i guess who's also a dog that doesn't walk around and talk and wear clothes so is he like your retarded cousin, r bad roommate? And so they were like, oh, no, he's a cow. No, there's other cows in there. Yeah, and they clearly look they like don't cows. Look, yeah, they don't look anything like him. Not to mention there's when you two, see the other cows. Yeah, old snout holes. Exactly. He's got one little. He's got the, He's yeah. got the dog nose. The dog nose. Okay, so that was just their PC way of trying to brush that over. That's God the same shit here. Damn it's it. so goofy owns. A, Stop fucking with my cartoons. Well, and. <laughs> Yeah, with all the things that are offensive. Jesus. I, I'll tell you what. The only one that has made any sort of sense so far to me is Pepe Le Pew. Because <laughs> he was rapey? Because he was real rapey. Yeah. Like, that cat's like, no, like, you couldn't. Oh, no, I like no, it no, when no, you no. play her off. Uh, <laughs> oh, come to me. Oh, she tried to gouge my eye out. Clearly, she wants to score fuck me. Exactly. I shall get like, her first. That one makes sense, but... Uh, I, the rest of them, I'm like, you know, if you don't like it, just don't watch it. That's Once again, we took a little pathway. Always. Into the woods. Hey, they keep watching, so they like it. That's right. They keep <laughs> watching, <laughs> listening, keep whatever it is. Uh, another intriguing aspect of the Lacarte interview is the response to the question of what actually was her native name, as Lacarta was a name the reptilian being used only when they were, quote, among humans and talking to them. Lacerta would claim that her name was something like, all right, so here we go. You ready? You ready for this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it exactly how it states in the article. Lacerta, Lacerta, whatever the fuck it's called, would claim that her name was something like, I was so fucking close. You were super close. So close. There's three... Five K's in there. There is, mm -hmm. there is, uh, it looks like 10 S's, and uh, there is approximately seven H's yep. and two A's. Nope, four. <laughs> no, oh, four oh. of them, and one I, just one. <laughs> Here, here's the spelling. Here's the spelling, so you can tell me what it sounds like. S S S S 
H I A A S S S H A. It's almost like they went like this. Her name's Sh- Sh- Shakira. Oh, we can't put Shakira. Shit. <laughs> It almost looked like it went like this. Well, and it's got Shia LaBeouf, and the other Shakira, and Shaka Khan bring a name together. Like, okay, so here what it is. Four S's, one H, one I, two A's, three S's, one H, one A, three K's, ass, KK, <laughs> three H's. Just, just <laughs> I'm not going to spell ass. Three H's, S. Three H's. It's yeah. almost like it's funny because ass is, in, is in my email because. as well. So when I talk to blind ass. regular people, yeah, <laughs> well, it's not because I unintentionally forgot that eye. Oh yeah. So there's it's missing an eye. <laughs> I could uh, have done that if I fucking tried, but I spell <laughs> it out for people, and they're like repeating it, and they're like, okay, so it's B L N D. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten all exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's not even just you. It's like super. Like I, it seems weird to it hear. It sounds them so swear dumb shit. when you spell it out. A S S. No, everybody knows. And then somebody's gonna be like, "Oh, he said ass." <laughs> right. Anyways, it's a very strong pronunciation of the sh and k sounds. This name Shaka-ka. or sound was unique to each individual reptilian oh, who had no other names. What's more, this name is also unique to each reptilian when they reach adulthood. Until that point, they would use their children name. What is especially interesting here is that some researchers, perhaps most predominantly David Icke, have suggested that the reptilian language itself ancient is more geared around the sound and pronunciation as opposed to specific spellings. This certainly resonates with the response given by Lacerta and is also true of some languages from antiquity. Every language, period. So if you're not familiar with David Icke, David Icke is a big-time conspiracy theorist um, who he, he's got a lot of shit. I mean, he he's a big proponent of the um, reptilian theory uh, and like central banking stuff, um, all kinds of things like that. But he believes uh, he's got a uh, he's got a so, so far away from it. He's a big proprietor of the the reptilian conspiracy central bank yep. well cuz it's he like he I believes know, it's all those, tied together so, oh don't put your money in the bank dude he it, does those pennies that are generated annually yep. go to the reptilian so here's what he claims here's what he claims he claims that the idea of uh or that uh shape-shifting reptilian aliens control earth by taking on human form and gaining political power to manipulate human societies and he stated on multiple occasions that many world leaders are or are possessed by these reptilians. And that's a lot of what people believe the whole QAnon thing is and all that, which I'm not saying believe or don't believe, but that's a big aspect you do of that. You. That's a big aspect of that. So anyway, so that's to tie that in. So um, Lacerta's, but this is I back like before. like if there was a bunch of reptilians in something called the QAnon, there'd be more S's. In the name. In the name. Maybe the... Skew and snons. Shaka Khan. (laughs) Shaka Khan. Lacerta's race has a similar approach to time and how it's measured. Uh, A hint at the long... What now? What about time and measurement? Well, they have... uh, It's going to go into it. So they have a similar approach to time as their language. Mm -hmm. So their language is not about the spelling. It's about the... The, the pronunciation, pronunciation and yeah. the sound. So they have a similar approach to time and how it's measured. A hint at the long-held belief is some, in some circles is that there is an inner earth which is inhabited. Lacerta would state that because they usually live beneath the surface of the planet, they would measure time against the periodically returning cycles in the earth's magnetic field. While this would make her, quote, 57,663 cycles old, 
the human equivalent would be around 28 years old. How is that? But she's been here forever. Yeah. Yeah, right. Seen a few holes, maybe. <laughs> furthermore, well, maybe it's that, I don't know. Anyways, furthermore, she was a curious no, student of the be social behavior of the human species. She would claim was the reason that she revealed her true nature. And then through them to this guy, Ollie. So part of the reason was to combat the lies and misinformation of the, quote, crazies and liars and who claimed you, to know the truth of her race. Wouldn't you do it by, uh, I don't know, talking to someone more important? Yeah. So then Ollie went on to ask her about UFOs uh, and about the sightings witnessed by humans, mm -hmm. and she said that they were, in fact, their own terrestrial vehicles, our own terrestrial vehicles. Now, she admitted that some of them did indeed belong to a race. Most of them didn't. She elaborated that some UFOs are real crafts. Dude, there's a Rick and Morty Pina. episode that's all about snakes. And Will you let this girl talk, please? <laughs> My God. Belonging either to your own species. Human. Especially to your military. Nope. Sorry. No. What was that? I, there weren't enough S's in especially. Or to other. S especially. S S or to other alien species. You sound like Cobra Commander. <laughs> or to us. <laughs> reptilians. <laughs> you sound like Cobra Commander from G.I. Joe. <laughs> Lacerta would then offer details of exactly what these alleged reptiles. -E <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> Curse <-E> G.I. Joe. <laughs> well, apparently, that's what this reptilian lady apparently. sounded like. Apparently. Oh, shit. So. Oh. But she can pronounce especially <laughs> very well. She offered details of exactly what these alleged reptilian alien aerial vehicles are. She claimed that such vehicles have a metallic, bright gray, cigar-shaped cylindrical appearance and often make a very deep humming sound. She also said these crafts will most likely have five red lights along the side, and more often than not, they are hidden with cloaking devices, meaning any sightings are due to defective vehicles or negligence on the pilot's part. <laughs> she also offered that the Arctic, Antarctica, and Inner Asia, especially over the mountains, mm -hmm. are the places of Earth to witness on these reptilian crafts. What can CBD really do for you? Relieve anxiety? Ease pain? Hi, this is Ben with Clarkston CBD Company. We specialize in CBD, making it simple and easy to find the perfect CBD blend for you. Talk to us about your health goals and learn how CBD works in the body and how it can benefit you. Find us at 400 8th Street across from Walmart or shop online at ClarkstonCBDCo.com. We specialize in CBD. Clarkston CBD Company. Stay healthy. Is that right? That's what she says. So... So if you want to go see one of these, even that we would put a vehicle out that everything is super advanced, but the blinkers don't work. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, not at all. But then again, this is also back in you know what the early, the early two thousands. Oh, you're right. I forget. That I that mean, the early years, it could have been the twenty years. Is I mean, huge amounts of difference between this huge. I, who race. knows? Who knows? I guess this lady is twenty, and that's forever. Who knows? She then went on to state that although they, the reptilians, do have small fleet of disc shaped crafts. Generally speaking, these belong to another alien species. She also stated that does indeed tie with other claims that triangular crafts are the result of the military who use extraterrestrial technology to put them together. She also stated that many UFO sightings are down to natural phenomena 
such as plasma flares high in the atmosphere. Plasma flares. Okay, which would be a large flash of light, not a stationary metallic object with flashing lights on the side. Yeah. Pretty sure. I uh, I know we like to say we believe a little bit of everything. <laughs> uh, I want to say that this lady needs to get her head out of her ass. Bullshit, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah? You think so? Preach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well it says plasma well, not, flares not the lady whoever interviewed her this uh what's the name uh, uh ollie k ollie k get your head out of your ass dude bud. it's she's not even done she goes on to say that she's uh, 20 um so he asked her about the ancient world and the reptilian conspiracies claim that symbols and symbolism are of great importance. She doesn't know she's uh, She asked her, or he asked her this, and the response was, um, she claims that these symbols have been copied by humanity and used for their own ends. In particular, a four-winged serpent, which has been manipulated in various ways. An interesting point is that on several occasions how the serpent, snake, or dragon, as seen, uh, are the ones that come up time and again throughout history. And what's more, these serpents always seem to enjoy prominence in multiple civilizations, creation stories, myths, and legends. 90% of the animals on the planet are afraid of snakes. Yeah. Did you know that's why cats hiss? Really? They know instinctively that most animals are afraid of snakes, so they imitate it by hissing. I did not know that. Yep. So, wow. Yeah, apparently cats are now involved in the reptilian conspiracy. Hmm. So another symbol that she pointed out featured a circular dragon with seven stars in the middle. And when Ollie asked if these stars represented the Pleiades star system which many researchers claim is the home of the reptilian race, Lacerta would respond that they actually represented their seven colonies. The idea, meaning, and consequences of symbolism are intriguing and could be of great importance to understanding such bizarre notions as reptilians, other realms, and extraterrestrial visitation. So she, they went on to her diet. Oh, of Lacerta's race and how being in the sun is of intense pleasure to them, mm. essentially due to their lower body temperature. Cold blood. That's just stealing yeah. from regular reptiles. That's, yeah. Uh, That's I mean, not even you alien. Can, you can shape shift. Even humans can go out in the sun and feel re energized. Yeah, I mean, but it's the cold blooded nature. Yeah, uh, if like a reptile is in intense the cold. pleasure. Yeah, I mean, like, oh, the sun beams a stroke in my vagina. Well, that's why snakes and most reptiles do live underground and shit like that or occupy deserts and stuff is for that high body temperature because if they get too cold, they'll die. I mean, put some lizards in a cage in your house and then don't turn that sun lamp on. They're going to mm. die as they need it to stay warm because otherwise they freeze to death. She claims that areas of artificial sun for the general health and well-being of their kind are brought down to the deep dwellings inside the earth. Being in sunlight, artificial or real, allows the reptilian's body to function with more alacrity and precision, at least according, that is, to the claims of Lacerta. Or anybody that's ever researched any reptiles ever. While describing what kind of clothing she would wear. Lacerta, what you wearing? The people want to know. Oh, well, today I'm wearing a wonderful shirt that's similar to human form. What can CBD really do for you? Relieve anxiety? Ease pain? Hi. This is Ben with Clarkston CBD Company. We specialize in CBD, making it simple and easy to find the perfect CBD blend for you. Talk to us about your health goals and learn how CBD works in the body and how it can benefit you. Find us at 400 8th Street across from Walmart or shop online at ClarkstonCBDCo.com. We specialize in CBD. 
Clarkston CBD Company. Stay healthy. Yep. So uh, she describes that they would only wear uh, clothes when in human form. They would shape shift into human form and then wear clothes. She claimed that human clothing was indeed uncomfortable for them. Uh, when they were in their subterranean homes or with others near their own name, they wouldn't wear anything. Whoa. Bunch of nude lizards running around just I think it would each be other. weirder to see lizards with pants. Yeah, well, that's like true. Like if I'm just seeing a bunch of like human-sized pants wearing some fucking, <laughs> yeah. you know, just I, I don't know why. I pictured like the pant leg rolled up. Yeah. Like fucking Tom Sawyer shit. That's yeah. what I pick her straw hats and and just pants, like nothing up front and they're like, Well like <laughs> like a bunch of Mennonite reptiles. Yeah. So then Ollie went on to ask her about family, friends. Uh she would state that the closest match to this notion for her humans would be family. Although there were oh, of of their names and their focus of phonetic nature of names. I think it's strange that they even bother with family because they'll eat each other, even in their most yeah. state. I mean, reptiles will eat their siblings. They There's no emotional attachment. That's why you refer to robots and, like, reptiles as being cold. Yeah. Distant. No maternal instincts whatsoever they lay eggs let them hatch and then they're gone and if the parent animal finds them they will eat them well if the claims are true from lacerta uh reptilians date back to the time of the dinosaurs and what's more she would claim that the disaster that wiped out the reptilians unadvanced ancestors 65 million years ago was not a meteor as accepted history tells us but an ancient war between alien groups who essentially used the planet as their battleground. One of these alien races were reptilian, but not connected to Lacerta's race. She claimed that the race was, quote, not from this universe, but from a bubble in the foam of the Omniverse, or essentially another dimension or realm. She stated that this was the closest that the human mind at its current state of evolution could understand this other plateau of existence. Lizards have much smaller brains than we do. But lady. not these not these not, alien not lizards, these Mike. Ones. No. Not but these they alien still, lizards. But they still can't survive the cold. They wear pants and have big brains. Yeah. Okay, so the whole lizard brain thing is all instinct, not thought process. <laughs> Yeah. So just by nature. And also, uh, all of their answer what what the fuck about the crocodile? That's been around since dinosaur times. Wasn't yeah. wiped out, didn't evolve, yeah. still doing its fucking thing, hasn't changed in sixty five well, million years. Here's where it comes into back into the similar theories of what we talked about with Wajid of the uh realms of existence. Mm -hmm. So Deal with this uh Turn the attention back to the reptilian theories of David Icke, where he ta he makes very similar claims of the reptilian entities that he describes as coming from the, quote, lower fourth dimension. Mm. This level of existence is more in line with the entity's vibrational frequency. They're always there, but vibrate at a different rate and so perceive a completely different reality. Now, if you go back to the claims of Lacerta, she stated that the most important aspect to remember when attempting to make sense of these revelations was that these particular reptilian entities would, quote, walk between bubbles by use of quantum technology, although some entities could not or could do so using, quote, advanced mental abilities. Now, if you apply that to what Wajid's talking about, about spiritual enlightenment, Mm -hmm. or astral projection or anything like that. Now you just find a way to tie your physical being to that same type of transportation mm -hmm. 
through vibrational frequencies. You know, the idea that you can vibrate two particles to meld together Mm -hmm. and then stop the vibration and they're now... Well, I mean, think about we've been... uh, You could do that to move in between realms. You could vibrate your particles to literally separate enough to Which has been applied to superheroes. So the theory I mean, they they, they did a, an experiment where they took uh I want to say it was f- light photons and they sh- shot them at a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. Okay? And they had light and dark and when they turned the lights off it hit a different pathway than when the lights were on. So then when they tricked the photon, when it launched, the lights were on. Mm -hmm. It was about, oh, and it it would go through, they had these two circles, and it would go through one circle during the light and one circle during during the dark. And they showed that when they tricked the photon, they found a way to observe it in between night and dark, light and dark, and it went through both at the exact same time. So the idea is is that without the light on or off, it goes through both points in time, but while the light's on, it goes through the one realm. Mm-hmm. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, it would be basically reacting to the... To being viewed. Yeah. Which is just... So when it's doing... When it's not being viewed, it's doing something entirely different than when it's being viewed in the light and the dark. That's the whole principle of quantum entanglement. Yeah. Exactly. So, anyways, with that being said, that kind of reminds me of that. It makes me think that they that is control of those sim- things. That's taking control of your particles and being able to put them into a different reality. It would be the start of figuring it out that that's even a thing. Yeah. isn't Because that's just with light. Which means you'd have to also measure without any sort of so natural light rather than artificial because of the electrical impulses that are also in there because that could cause variations. You could get a false positive with something that would happen, but it would be due to the electro the electrodes that are going through it all rather than just the natural light photons. So yeah. But we've also heard a couple of the theories that some of the propulsion systems, or not propulsion, the uh, tractor beam type mythology thing is, yeah. uh, is done with photons. And I'm telling Lots you right now, photons. the idea that uh, a tractor beam is hard this day and age, I mean, it's. We looked over those MK Ultra experiments, the things that they've admitted to being able to do as far as. Memory implants using aerosol, simple aerosol, to basically essentially make somebody not only forget but paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And then you could implant memories, have that memory trigger years later, or never trigger at all. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. You could have a key sequence. You could have a, a sound. You could have a visual aid. You could have anything trigger that memory. So it's interesting how when you look at some, a lot of these alien abduction scenarios and you have someone like that one that we talked about where the guy didn't remember for decades and yeah. then all of a sudden had these memories. Not to say, which we called bullshit on that, which was pretty 80 years, Jesus fuck. Mm-hmm. But in some cases in an abduction scenario, like you know, in other s- situations where they don't remember for years, um, that's a that's a clear sign that it could have been an implanted memory. Mm-hmm. Um, and so with these, it's a simple matter of, you know, learning to control. Well, that. there's no saying that for the people that would have implanted it at the time, how early in that process, like say it was pre-mastered, like you've only touched on it. So the whole 80 years it's coming back, they were aiming for a permanent, but didn't quite have it up to snuff yet so they could get rid of it for as long as possible, but it came back to them 80 years because they didn't have their process perfected. Well, she's got even more outlandish claims. She claims that uh, her assertion that the first species, the humanoids, had arrived on Earth approximately 150 years before the first reptilians did. So then that would mean that it wasn't ever theirs? 
I just guess. Wanted to, just wanted to put that out there. For by the them time saying that it was never ours, based yeah. on that, they got we got there first. By the time the first reptilians did arrive, these humanoids had established several colonies, with the main one being in what is now modern day Antarctica, with another large settlement in Asia. It wasn't long after the arrival of this reptilian species that the Great War would break out. So, yeah, like you said, she claims that it was never ours. Now, well, she no, didn't let's, claim let's that it ahead. was theirs. She just claims that it wasn't ours. But it was never she ours. She also claims that we came about by uh, other involvement to accelerate our process. So how the fuck would we have gotten there 20 years before them? Well, and she also, says they were from here. The so where humanoid, did they come from? She doesn't say human. She just says the humanoids. Yeah, the first race of humanoids. Yeah. Came. Okay, so fine. <laughs> we'll go ahead and scratch that part of us. Well, but it, they were always there. Well, wait up. I mean, it's, look, it's super easy for me to say, or anybody, that's the whole deal why Santa is at the North Pole. Mm-hmm. Who's going to go fucking check? You know, so you say Antarctica. Oh, Antarctica is a place where these reptilians used to be. Who's going to go check? Well, you can't. No, so that's the whole point. It's an easy easy thing to say. Oh, well, there was an Antarctica where you can't check, and now you can't find it. Now it's disappeared. Yeah, because you need permission to go there, and it's usually declined if you're not there for some scientific and specific thing. So she claims that the reason for the conflict... Uh, was the resources of Earth, in particular copper, which has great value when used correctly. Now, what's interesting about that, and I wonder if they're going to go this, Mm. but um, by utilizing modern technology, which manipulates the dimensional fields, allowing such travel between these realms, copper was also used by these reptilian entities to create huge and potent bombs, similar but more powerful than the nuclear bombs created by humans in the mid-20th century. Oh, that's right. They claim that these <coughs> other reptiles were the ones Well, I was thinking up. of the uh, Orgone, because Orgon. there's copper in there. Remember of mm-hmm. um, uh, Sherry Shriner and all that shit? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's one of our standard precious metals, so. Yeah. It's, uh, only both so the humanoids and the reptilians wanted control of these materials, and it appeared that the humanoids had initially managed to master the valuable resource. However, this would ultimately result in the deployment of a nuclear bomb that hit what we recognize today as middle America. It is, it's obvious that the insinuation, insinuation, oh, insinuation, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that word spelt out before. Insinuate? Insinuate. Hmm. Isn't that dumb? Yeah. I'm almost 40. Later confirmed by this alleged reptilian being. I'm sure you've seen it in school, but I guess I just it threw me for a loop. Uh, (laughs) Is that in this event, not a meteor, is what killed all life, including the dinosaurs from the planet. She would even continue that the presence of iridium in the area, that we believe is down to a meteor impact, was uh, actually formed from the fallout materials in the atmosphere. Incidentally, this event would lead to a, quote, nuclear winter that would last for over 200 years. So well, that's a convenient truth, isn't it? Well, the Ice Age hits right at the end. It's convenient. Which Anyways. reptiles would have died through? Just saying. And I don't, I don't see how nuclear winter is the same as an Ice Age. It's uh, Wouldn't it look different? It's because it would cause... The ozone to be you have different depleted. you have different factors going in right nuclear winters in reform to all the fallout that would cause yeah. that's the nuclear winter so if she you have both, a but meteor there would strike also be from the nuclear fallout there would be a lessening of our ozone allowing more so you think that whether change, it would be meteor it could have caused uh, an ice age okay so that would be that. Okay. Is it, if it end up depleting so much through all of that, and then it would take time for the planet's ozone to replenish. Yeah. But during that time, yeah, I mean, it could happen. Uh, so many researchers have no doubt in their minds that unknown and probably advanced civilizations existed 
Although the level of advancement differs greatly from researcher to researcher, most estimations are that this or these civilizations existed somewhere between 12,500 years to 15,000 years ago. Even less conservative estimations hover around 20,000 to 25,000 year mark. Um, Speaking of civilizations and advanced ones at that existing not only millions of years ago, but at the supposed time of the dinosaurs is understandably hard for many to accept as even possible as they could well be correct. Well, yeah, there's nothing to substantiate ancient civilizations that actually existed. There's nothing it's to all substantiate speculation. how old that stuff is. Like yeah. I know we're like, there's oh, a lot of dating. There's yeah. a lot of new science like Robert Schock, mm. uh, Graham Hancock that are saying that there are signs like on the Sphinx mm. is a, is a really great example of that, that seems to be predating what we know of as similar as civilization. I, I do think that, if all we have discovered is just based on w- how far we've dug, I think there's a lot more we haven't found. I mean, you're talking about thousands, hundreds, if not thousands of thousands of years for wind and dust to mm-hmm. pile up and cover. Like like the... Uh, You'd lose my body in a sandstorm in about 20 minutes. Exactly. So so the idea that, you know, we've only discovered what we, as far as we've gone, as we've dug. I mean, you know, yeah, they'll say, well, we've dug pretty far. Well, not everywhere. Yeah. Jesus. I mean, you know, that's what's funny is the fact that we don't, we haven't discovered 80% of what's in our oceans. But yet we claim to have a pretty good grasp on what our ancient civilizations were all about and who discovered what. And, you know, you have a warring race that didn't want the race that they conquered to have a history. You lose a chunk of history. There's no record. Why would there be? It's been destroyed. All you had to do was burn some scrolls back oh, then. Yeah, we've done it. Uh, well, Absolutely. not necessarily just us, but yeah, think about just the whole Vikings running Look, around. If they you, took what they wanted. That's but right. Most of it was burned because um, they aside saw Aside from false gods. cave drawings, aside from some permanent, you know, with, with carvings on, on structures, things like that, those are... You're talking about a handful of examples, and I know a lot of people will say there's a lot more than a handful. But in the history of civilization, yeah, it's a handful of examples of ancient writing, ancient stories. Who knows what they're based on or from? Nobody knows the state of their mind. No. Who who the did education that? Education level at the time. Look, at, it's amazing. I love to think about the concept of a crazy guy with a chisel. Mm-hmm. going through the pyramids and there was one in every culture like we have the guy in the padded room that decides to carve with his fingernails uh pictures of trees in his cell walls van gogh cut his own fucking ear off yeah okay so yeah it's not real uh, much of a stretch i'm not to discrediting that, it but no, they tend but to I mean. not think about what could have been a very a very simple answer, which is you got a bunch of crazies that when the world was coming to an end for these people, decided they were going to scrawl on all their ramblings of whatever. I mean, who knows? Look, Revelation is an excellent example of a of a guy having a vision exiled on an island mm-hmm. that has been taken as prophecy ever since. Yeah. So... How do we know what was, you know, maybe they were being super fantastical and what, maybe they really did have a handle well, on what was funny. real and not, but they were just doodling. Well, and, and they happened to do it with chisels and hammers. Right, which is not an easy thing to do. But we, you know, I'm not saying that it's not, but it's it, that is something everybody wants to find deeper meaning, but nobody goes to the fact that maybe they were just... You know, like, like, well, we come from a civilization that thinks everybody is a super individual, and yet we all look for all the similarities. Okay. So you could not possibly tell me what I'm thinking at any given time. Yeah. No one can. They can all think they can, and everybody wants to guess, but no. You're like, uh, you look like you're thinking about this. Wrong. Absolutely, totally wrong. So when this person did stuff, not to mention 
patterns only mean stuff to me. I can make some patterns at home and then bring them to you, and you'd be like, what's this mean? Yeah. You got no fucking idea. You've been to my apartment a bunch of times. Yeah. It's just some shit from my apartment that meant something to me and no one else. And we're talking about an ancient world that had not only a world that we've never experienced or seen, ever. Nothing as brutal or harsh or primitive as that environment. Right. We even go half as far back as that. We have that. no we idea. You're talking stuff. about you're talking about 90% of the population was starving, mm-hmm. dying of something, scared to death of everything, mm-hmm. and simply going from day to day wondering if they were going to eat next. Now you're talking about a civilization a society that has the complete opposite of that. Every comfort and advantage in the world, looking back on that, trying to find meaning based on what we know of the world. Mm -hmm. That is such a huge gap in not only knowledge, but, but experience and perspective that even if you take a guy this day and age and throw him in the Congo with his perspective of the world, he knows to look for a road. <coughs> yeah, well, their roads are rivers there. Well, I'm just saying, though, like, you you have some knowledge of the world, whereas you take mm. isolated tribes, people who did not travel very far outside their geographic location yeah. unless they were nomads, mm. but they, they their worldview the was they generally 15 miles outside of their area that they grew up in we've got these creatures that come at us Mm -hmm. let's we've got rivers so we're fishing and then let's go over here where it's light and try and figure out this crazy fucking rain cycle well because you got to realize to have food you have to either be somewhere where you know you're going to stumble upon animals or carry animals with you or food with you so the idea of traveling just to travel really wasn't a thing they migrated because it was either lack of resources or or due to war well and just even speaking of the congo uh i mean for real dude like some of those parts most of the time are just inaccessible just you know to to stay oh yeah yeah no i mean to certain parts yeah Yeah. some things are inaccessible period all i'm saying is is that you are you're talking about trying to divulge information from ancient, ancient, Mm -hmm. not only visually, but also state of mind. You're trying to decipher what these people were thinking based on what they drew and wrote and built. I, that's to me, that is almost an impossible endeavor because even if you think, you know, even if you (laughs) think that, Oh, it has to, this has to be the most probable. What if some guy was like, look, look, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a snake next to this guy mm-hmm. just because I think it looks cool. Well, but dude, then we look at it and be like, well, clearly they worship serpents. Well, exactly. Like, can you imagine? Like, dude, people nowadays have skulls everywhere. Oh yeah. Are they going to oh. look back on our civilization and say, "Well, this guy had a skull on his elbow, so clearly he worshipped the dead." Yeah, and they're going to find a Britney Spears CD oh, in that guy's Lord. apartment and be like, "This was a part of the ritual. They played yeah. Hit Me Baby one more time <laughs> as they hit them to death." <laughs> <laughs> the clubbing ritual the is cl- what they call this. This is what their native people Dude, imagine. Played that's, every time they no murder. No shit, man. I mean, that's, anyways, that's, that's what cracks me up about well, all it's that. just is, like, the, okay, you know. when I was a kid, uh, had what I used to draw be chisels and stuff in stone, and you would have found them, we'd have a whole lot different stuff in the future. But we have much less permanent stuff. We chalk that the rain blows away, the uh, paper that decomposes after uh, whatever, it rains, anything like that, to where it's not, findable anymore and if we go back to the times of like the bible and all these revelations things what if these were actual things of god and they back then took them for what they were and nowadays we're like nope dehydration carry on yeah yeah (laughs) and everyone's like where is god well he's been talking to all of you and you just think they're all dehydrated i mean that's the thing is it's it's all speculative it's, you know you can base it on but anyways but i go, drew pokemon as a child 
if I had to do that with a chisel, someone may think that I worshipped dragons or whatever the fuck, this weird turtle with cannons on its back. Yeah. It's come on. Like, they're, oh, look at this dinosaur that had plants on its back and shit and all these crazy things that they have there, which it's all just uh, an autistic kid's bug collection. Well, according to Lacerta, the main source of all of her info about the early times of reptilians and humans is based on a discovery made by her ancestors of a strange crystal approximately 16,000 years ago in what is now North America. Doesn't that, in her age, 16,000 years ago, isn't that like five years? Something like that. She's 45,000 cycles old. It was like 56,000, 600 and something cycles. Yeah, which equivalated to 20 years. 28 years. So if we're calling 16,000 years, then yeah, we'll call that like five years. Yeah. Right? So five so, years ago, somebody found something, and that's going to tell us where the planet came from? I was alive five years ago. In this crystal was information apparently made and recorded by the last of the first war survivors. Mm -hmm. Her ancestors were able to learn the fate of the first humanoids and reptilian entities on Earth. Uh, they are then significant... Oh, there are significant gaps in history from then until around 16,000 years ago, mainly through similar uses and sciences as we do today. What's perhaps also interesting is that Lacerta claims that human scientists and historians have and still possess skeletal proof of her reptilian ancestors, largely due to the consideration of an intelligent, upright reptilian entity not being in their thought processes. However, each has dismissed or mislabeled these as inconsequential, unknown, or something else entirely. I don't believe that for a minute. It, because of the fact that you have a scientist that finds a skeleton a entity or anything remotely resembling something they've never seen before i they do not dismiss that there for a while people were finding dead elephants and they that's where the mythology of the cyclops came from from dead elephants? From a dead elephant skull that did not have the tusks on it, the two large oh. eye cavities. The middle had rotted out, so it looked like one giant eye cavity. And Very that's where all of them thought the Cyclops was real. Wow. So that's, yeah. And not to mention how many dinosaur bones we find and put together wrong yeah. and then figure it out later. Exactly. So, well, look how long we've been digging up dinosaur bones. Hundreds of years. Exactly. And, and we, we just, just now come to the point that they're fucking peacocks. Come on. Yeah. They think uh, raptors had feathers on them to make them run faster, more aerodynamically. They weren't capable of flight, but the feathers on them were to help them Dude, run they were the dinosaur's world of a chicken. Fucking, yeah. Well, they couldn't fly. No, that's actually what uh, the closest relative to a T-Rex nowadays is what? a chicken. Yeah. They slowly, after that age, they had... I, have you ever heard of the terra bird? Yeah. Okay, so it was coming about around the time uh, that wolves and saber-toothed tigers were the pro, the, like mm. top. These were the three. Okay, it died off because wolves hunted in packs so they could watch each other's back while they ate. The saber-toothed tiger could not because they were lone humper, hunters and stuff like that. They were lone, lone humpers. humpers. Oh, but, man. So the wolves took them down. Now, the <laughs> best killer of them was the terror bird, but because it had no arms, it could kill them with a one headbutt of this beak, ah. but it couldn't eat without having to worry about predators. So well, it died off. You know, and that, that makes sense. A fucking chicken. Because me and Corey went to a farm, and this chicken was going after her toes, something fierce, dude. And I told her, I was like, you know what? That looks like a T-Rex if you're going after your toes. That's what that looks like right now. <laughs> yeah. That's, so that's what they. So I wanted to get a little car. Old, I wanted to get a little car, and have in its rearview mirror have do this little thing where the chicken is chasing the car, <laughs> you know, like from the movie Jurassic Park with the whole chicken. <laughs> Guys, do you feel that? Have uh, a little uh, impulse deal underneath yep, the dash. Yep. To... Oh, I'm fairly alarmed here. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh my Dude, god! You remember that old cartoon, Jimmy Neutron? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that movie, that giant chicken yep, bad guy. The chicken, that's yep. what it would be. I don't remember what that was called, <laughs> but that would be what would have to be chasing your car. Oh shit! Uh, Lacerta continued uh, that many skeletal reconstructions of dinosaurs are totally wrong, with some ancient animals having never existed due to the use of many bones that didn't belong together in such attempted constructions. Yep. Actually, Maybe slightly more ominous. Actually a fact. Is that according to the Lacerta files, some scientists in high-ranking positions in museums and other historical institutions are aware of this problem but don't admit it to the public. Even more concerning... Although, remember, speculative, according to the Lacerta interview, is that one almost successful reconstruction was made at some point in the second half of the 20th century, but their work was shut down and suppressed. And we know the government never does that. No, not for stuff that's incorrect anyway. Highly speculative claims, no doubt. And we should remember, though, while perhaps less explosive, the idea of scientists who do not toe the line, particularly in archaeology and ancient history, often have funds removed. They're pretty If low. they're trying to say that scientists don't fuck up, uh, wrong. No, but if they don't sh show that their work is progressing in some manner, they will lose their grants. I mean, that is in, in some cases, but in other cases, there's a lot of, like, well, let's be grab honest, ass and going Anthropology on and, and archaeology, know. not the greatest fields nowadays. Yeah. Uh, I If I were either one of those for a long career of never finding anything... I find some bones, I'm putting them together however the fuck I yeah, feel like no it. Yeah, no shit. You're going to give me my grant, I'm going to retire. <laughs> that's how that's going to go. Another idea that comes up in the interview um, is that of the hollow earth. Uh, the speculation that it has genuinely troubled some of the finest minds in history, including many of the great thinkers of the Renaissance, is that... Um, while Lacerta would claim that the Earth is not entirely hollow, there is no second sun, for example, it does have a vast and extensive network of cave systems. More important to realize here is that Lacerta is not referring to the cave systems near the surface of the Earth, which are huge and mammoth-like in their own right, but the unknown to humans, at least, cavernous expanses of open space that exist, quote, deep under the Earth, between 2,000 to 8,000 meters. Now, you s figure that up, 2,000 to 8,000 meters. That that's 6,000 feet to about, what, 24,000 feet? So we're talking, what, like three miles down? Yeah. So also, these huge, open, vast systems are further connected by an equally vast network of tunnels connecting continents to each other deep below the surface of the planet, which there have been theories about the Great Lakes being tunnels at the bottom of the Great Lakes that lead to the ocean yep. and whatnot. Uh, but, I mean, nobody's really ever proven that. No, but any sort of ancient... I mean, w it stands to reason with the center of the Earth being magma. Mm -hmm. the magma. <laughs> magma. Uh, you seen any magma rock, like after it dries, like when a volcano goes off and makes a little island? Magma. You ever seen that? The the rocks with all the little the hair holes, pockets. The the golf ball rocks. Yeah. So the dimple rocks underneath. Three the dimply lava down. rocks. Three to five miles down. The adorable little pocketed rocks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> three to five miles down. There's these. I mean, you'd think that there would have plenty of. Caverns like that. Also, I'm pretty sure that that's the the ocean goes deeper than five miles. Well, she claims that, that these are know. also lit and powered by technological and gravitational devices, including areas with a quote artificial sun. While there are several discrete surface areas, particularly in America and Australia, hmm. um, so apparently something to keep in mind is the um, the missing 411 who predominantly go missing in the North American continent, often in remote or wooded areas. Many of those who have disappeared only to suddenly turn up in the strangest circumstance, 
often report a, quote, strange creature with glowing red eyes having taken and returned them. If we accept the idea of indigenous, intelligent, and advanced reptilian creatures living deep underground, assessing the Earth at various points in remote areas around the world as even potentially true for a moment, it is a very interesting prospect indeed. If they're shapeshifters. I assume they're shapeshifting to look like something they've seen, and you don't want a second one of them. And reptiles are carnivorous. Would they not just eat a fucking hiker and then look like them? You know, like shapeshift to do that? Yeah. So that way there would never be a second one of that guy running Well, around. that... that is assuming that they also contain that they also have the ability to take on a specific form. So if they can just shape shift, mm. that's one thing. But if you can actually assimilate into another thing that you can just look at or feast on or well, intake to I chew, just I think that's that a different. If it was a shape shifting because they keep taking over world leaders, yeah. Well, I mean that's that's. I mean, saying. so clearly that is a thing. So then you would have to be able to at least look but at But what if they're whatever. what if they're the world leaders to begin with? What if there are people that are put in place so it's never like they're taken fabricated, over by reptilians fabricated later? Lives. Yeah. So their parents who I mean, have that's the, I mean of look, if you children if you've been here for millions of years. Twenties of years. Sure. Then <laughs> Then, <laughs> well, it's her fucking math. I'm just that's saying. Ridiculous. Then, then you know, you would have an idea of how to assimilate with, or at least blend in with. I would imagine, specifically, if you can shape shift. So, if you can shape shift, I would imagine you could learn how to shape shift into at least something similar enough to be able to get by. I don't know. I think that if you've been here for millions of years, that maybe you would be able to survive without the sunshine. I, uh, you know, evolution potential. doesn't ever make you transform into other things so far. Yeah. In any thing. Well, I mean, the fact is minor bugs is that the reptilian like conspiracy is one that takes every road that's ever been possible. Yeah, and it's a bit of a divisive one amongst uh, conspiracy circles because... Um, they gain a new power every fucking day, as far as I'm concerned, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, well, and there's a lot of doubt about this, uh, the, you know, the realness, the authenticity of the Lacerda files as, to begin with. Well, with and the understandably so. Of the earth has never been yours. At this point, I'm pretty sure they'd have rose up and taken us over. But it does still... However, it is still weird that these there are certain claims that do fit in with some widespread notions like the ancient astronaut theory, um, some of those with other researchers across the years. Um, it, it's only in the sense for how crazy this story is for me. That's like if I took everything that we've talked about on this podcast and spun myself a weird-ass tale. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, there's parts of everything we talked about in there because there fucking are because well, I heard it and then I made up a bullshit story based on it. Well, to go along with like um, what we had talked about, about, you know, ancient civilizations we've only dug so far, who knows how the oldest one, Graham Hancock, uh, a great uh, line by him that he said once was things just keep getting older. Mm -hmm. You know, the more that they dig, the more that they find civilizations get older. I mean, at one point, we didn't know that the Sumerian, the Sumerian civilization even existed. Now oh, they, yeah. they are the oldest civilization, supposedly the ones that first invented writing. So yeah. we had no idea. So as we, and, and this is the thing, I'm not against space travel. I love the idea of space travel. I think it's important that we go to other planets but how do we not have the exact same um, ambition and zeal to discover what's right beneath us? You know, it's like unless it's from a conspiracy point, I will give this whole nonsense lady credit in the sense of if there's tunnels that are down there that are being utilized by someone, whether they be naturally formed or whether we just put fucking torches on the wall. It doesn't have to be any fantastic uh, stuff. It would stand why we wouldn't want to get to the bottom of the ocean or claim that we can't. 
Because what if we stumbled on some of this shit? Yeah. If you don't want to have your own egg cracked wide open in front of everybody, like the government would have had to have given funding to someone to research down that far. And then if that research team found what they've been hiding, you'd be kicking yourself in your own ass. Yeah. So that's, I, I would give that as the closest thing that if there was any merit to these things, which I fully believe that there are magma tunnels down there because that's kind of what it does. Uh, so I don't know that we're utilizing it, but it would make sense that if our government ever, or any government ever found out about tunnels that connected different countries that would be used. Yeah. Like, oh, well, we got to weigh in if we ever fucking want. And we got to weigh out because they don't know about it. Yeah. So it, it, I can see where they're coming from with all that. I just don't need to throw talking lizards that sometimes can survive uh, mildly cold temperatures but somehow survived a nuclear winter. <laughs> Uh, and that live underground with this artificial sun that we don't know how works. I also would just assume that this artificial sun's probably a magma core, <laughs> which I imagine that much lava in one spot would look like a sun. Yeah. So, uh, but it's just such a far-fetched claim. They go way too many places. Yeah. Way too many. I can't. I can't get behind it. So we're gonna put the official stamp on it, huh? <gasps> Bullshit, motherfucker! <laughs> the whole thing, yeah. parts of it. I'll go. You can't say that it's all bullshit because some things you're like, oh well, I've heard stuff like that before. So somewhere along the lines, there had to have been some nugget of truth to something, whether it was spun to be this craziness or not, like. It's just, uh, all of this is just a big fishing tale to me. Yeah. It's, you know, somebody saw something crazy, their friends made fun of them, so they fucking amped it up, and then their friends told their friends, and then somebody bought it as a stranger and was just like, oh, oh I'm going to go home and tell my wife. And then your wife's also really dumb, so you guys <laughs> spit that off to everyone you know, and then somebody picked it up and like, you know, that sounds like a good TV show. And then they make that shit, and then... Yeah, That's the just, thing with these claims that there's a lot of time and a lot of, you know, individuals involved. There, even with ancient cultures, we have found some evidence of their existence. So if there is a reptilian race that has been here for thousands of years. Yeah, there would have been some sort of something. altercation. And, and you can't tell me that we're mixing it up with dinosaur bones. No way, because at some point... We're going to find Dinosaurs, a skull that doesn't yeah. add up. I mean, even those elongated skulls that there for a while they thought were alien, now they found attributed to ancient, or not ancient, but um, Technic, tribes ancient. that stretch their skulls from babies. Yeah, no different than like the ones that were putting bones through their noses. Exactly. And that crazy it's a, shit. It's it a was, form of uh, of body manipulation. So it was, it's the that was thought to tattoos. be aliens for a long time. <laughs> we now know, you know, a lot of different tribes... They worship their gods in very interesting ways. Once again, I think we're pulling a lot of meaning they just from some very simple things that were going on amongst very simple people. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, but only time will tell. That's kind of the whole idea. Yeah. But uh, remember, uh, go on to our uh, Facebook page, UFO No mm -hmm. Podcast. Make sure and like our page. Um, if you can share some episodes, please do. It helps us grow the podcast. That's what we're trying to do. Trying to go talk to as many crazy people and yourselves. Hey, thanks once again for tuning in. And uh, uh, if you uh, want to, give me a little text, D-Text, 208-790-8226. Once again, look out to the skies. Watch the government. They're shoisty bastards. We'll catch you on the next episode, y'all.